Hello, and welcome to this GIS tech video on file geodatabases. The learning objectives for this lesson are to describe what a file geodatabase is and why it is important, identify the standard components of a file geodatabase, and develop basic proficiency with creating a file geodatabase in an industry standard desktop GIS tool. Before proceeding, I think it is important to clarify the definition of what I mean by file geodatabase. In the context of this video, I use the term file geodatabase to refer to a very specific data storage product created by ESRI for use in the ArcMap environment. I mention this as the term geodatabase can mean multiple things to multiple people, but for the context of this video, I'm referring to the file geodatabase in the context of ArcMap as ArcMap is a very popular GIS software package. The official definition of a file geodatabase is, a file geodatabase is a collection of files in a folder on disk that can store, query, and manage both spatial and non-spatial data. In the next part of this lesson, I discuss select specific components of a file geodatabase. In the following sections, I will discuss some of the common elements of a file geodatabase. Note that this will not be a thorough, exhaustive discussion of every aspect of a file geodatabase. Rather, I will focus on the elements you will likely first encounter when working with a file geodatabase. The five elements I will cover are feature class, feature dataset, standard tables, relationship classes, and attribute domains. A feature class is the primary storage unit for spatial data in the file geodatabase. Features within a feature class will all share the same spatial representations. For example, a feature class showing the locations of water fittings would all be a point feature class. A feature class showing roads would be a line feature class. A feature class showing block boundaries would be a polygon feature class. And a feature class showing street names would be an annotation feature class. Note too how the symbol for a feature class reflects the feature class's geometry. For example, a series of three points for a point feature class. A feature dataset contains spatially related features. You can think of a feature dataset as a logical organization container for various feature classes. For example, storing all of the information about land use for a city in one feature dataset, and all of the information about water resources for a city in a different feature dataset. In this example, you see two feature datasets that illustrate the previous example. Note how each feature dataset contains multiple types of feature classes. It is also important to note that all feature classes inside a feature dataset must be referenced to a common coordinate system. Standard tables, in the context of a file geodatabase, are a collection of non-spatial observations organized by rows and columns. Each row in a table represents one data observation. Each row in a table has the same columns. An important point is that each column has a data type. For example, a column might be a numerical data type called an integer, while another column might be a text string data type. Relationship classes allow one or more tables to be connected to one another using a common key. If you are familiar with general database terminology, this is the same idea as having a primary key in one table and a foreign key in another table. If you're not familiar with these ideas, as an example, this figure shows two tables that are related to one another. The point feature class on the top contains the locations of businesses in a refugee camp. The standard table below the point feature class contains pictures of businesses from the refugee camp. The third item on the bottom of the figure is the relationship class. 
This tells the GIS software which record from the point feature class is related to records of pictures stored in the standard table. In the next part of this lesson, I will walk you through how this works in practice. In this example, I provide a simple walkthrough of how relationship classes work in a GIS tool. When a user clicks on a point feature using the Identify tool, the Identify window opens showing the attributes associated with the point feature, as well as the fact that there is an attachment or picture associated with the point. When the user clicks on the attachment section of the Identify window, the relationship class looks for the record in the standard table that matches the record in the point feature class table. When the match is found, the picture associated with the point feature is then opened. Attribute domains are the idea of a predetermined list of values that can be used for populating records in a feature class or standard table. An easy way to think of this idea is that when you order something online and have to fill out your address, you are often given a predetermined list of countries or states to choose from. The importance of having domain tables is that it allows for standardized data when creating new records in a feature class or standard table. Using the previous example, when ordering something online, if people had to fill out the names of states or countries on their own, the records would become quickly inconsistent due to misspelling, typos, and so forth. This image shows an example of a domain table used for determining business types while doing field data collection in a refugee camp. Note how the data being stored is actually a numeric integer code, but has an associated textual description. This is a classic database technique where a number is stored, but the text is used to actually describe the data. This allows for smaller amounts of data to be stored and flexibility in case the description changes as multiple records do not need to be updated. In this part of the lesson, I give you a hands-on demonstration of creating a file geodatabase in ArcMap. I will use a database creation scenario of developing a disaster assessment geodatabase. Specifically, I will show you how to create a file geodatabase, domain tables, feature dataset, feature classes, attachments, and relationship classes. The feature classes I will create include a tree damage point feature class, a flooded area polygon feature class, and a damaged roads lines feature class. In this hands-on demonstration, I'll show you how to create a basic file geodatabase using ArcMap. The very first thing you need to do is create the actual file geodatabase and you can do this through Arc Catalog. One simple way to do it is create a new MXD or map document, save it, and then go to Arc Catalog in the folder where your MXD is located. For example, this is my current MXD shown in bold. All you have to do to create the file geodatabase is go to Arc Catalog, right click on your home directory, and select New File Geodatabase. And given that this is a disaster assessment scenario, I'm going to rename my file geodatabase to disaster assessment demo. Now that creates the initial container for the file geodatabase. The next thing we want to do now is actually create some domain tables. And domain tables get created within the database itself and by doing that it makes the domain table available to various feature classes you might create later. So to create a domain table I'm going to right click on the newly created file geodatabase and go to properties and you can see right as the dialog window opens I get a list um, an interface for creating domain tables and domain tables are pretty easy to create so basically you want to give your domain table a name. In this case, I'm going to create a domain table on damage status. So I'm going to call it damage status. And I can put a description of what this is about. Key codes for describing damage levels. Okay. 
Now in this case, I'm going to make this domain table be a data type of a long integer, and it's going to have coded values, okay? And I'll leave the split and merge policy with the default, but let me show you how this will work using a list of values that are going to store a number but display text. So for example, I'll make code number one no damage. I'll make code number two moderate damage. Code number three, I'll make severe damage. And I'll make a code four of completely complete damage. Now these are just examples I'm using for this hands-on, but these are the kind of things you'll want to really think about when you go to design and then actually create a file geo database. Okay? So that was creating a do basic domain table. Okay? Now the next thing I want to show you how to do is to create a featured data set. And this will be where I can have a logical container storing my various feature classes. And again, it's very easy to do. Like a lot of things with a file geo database, you can create things by just doing right clicks. So in this case, I'm going to right click on disaster assessment demo and do new featured data set. And in this case, I'm going to call this assessment data because I'm going to create a couple feature classes based on assessments I'm doing. So I give it a name. And now this is a key thing about a feature data set. All of the feature classes inside the feature data set have to use a common coordinate system. Um, in this case, I'm going to use a very standard one called WGS84. And the way I get to that is a couple ways. Um, I'm going to go to Geographic Coordinate Systems, World, and then look for WGS84. Another way is you can also type it in the search box up here. Either way will work. Okay, so I select WGS84 and I go through the wizard. And in this case, I'll just keep the um, default for the Z coordinate as it's not relevant to what I'm doing. I'm also going to take the default for the XY tolerance. And that's it. Now take a look. You can see that after going through those steps, I now have the feature data set symbol underneath the file geo database. The next thing I want to show you how to do is create a feature class inside of your feature data set. And like you've seen before, you can right click on your newly created feature data set and select new feature class. Now as a reminder, we're going to create three different feature classes for our damage assessment scenario. The first one will be a tree damage point feature class. And the idea here is that you might send a field crew to go out and inventory the damage done to trees during a natural disaster. So I'm going to call this one tree damage. And I'll use an alias that's a little more readable. So this means that on disk, it's going to store this text, but it's actually going to display this. It makes it a little more readable. And I'm going to select a geometry type, in this case just a point feature. And I'm not going to use M or Z values, but um, if you're doing routes or three-dimensional data, this is something to um, look into closer. And I'm going to click the next button to work my way through the wizard. Um, I'm going to keep the default configuration keywords. Now this is where I'm going to define the attribute fields or columns associated with this new feature class. And for example, I might have an attribute of the tree species. And I'll make that a text. And now here's, I'll show you where that domain table can come in. I'll have one called damage status. And I'm going to use a long integer as the data type. And now if I go down here to domain, you can see my damage status domain table comes up as an option in terms of the field properties. So this means that every time a record is created in this table, whoever is recording the data can pick one of the predetermined damage status values.
So I'll select that, and you can see that's all set. And then I hit Finish, and now you can see we have a new feature class called Tree Damage, a point feature class inside of the Assessment Data Feature Data Set inside of the Disaster Assessment File Geo Database. Now I'll show you the same process for creating a polygon and line feature classes. It's exactly the same as the process we use for the tree damage point feature class. To create these other feature classes, I'm simply going to right click on the feature data set and select new feature class. And this next one will be for flooded areas. In this case, I'll just keep it as a polygon feature. And often you can take the defaults. And again, I will come up with some attribute fields. Um, again, I'll use the damage status as an example. Now, again, this is where you'll have to determine when you're building your own file geodata is which fields, which data you actually want to record. And they actually call that data modeling. Okay. And again, I'll use my damage status and so forth. Okay, so again, here we see now a polygon feature class in the assessment data feature data set in the damage assessment demo file geo database. To finish this up, I'll create one more feature class of a line feature class showing damaged roads. So, same process right click on the feature data set, new feature class. And I'll give it a name and an alias. Make it a line and so forth. In this case, I might have the, the road name that I'll make a text field and the damage status that I will use my domain table. So I select long integer and then down here the domain table and finish that. Okay, some things to pay attention to. If you hadn't noticed, over here, as we've been creating these new feature classes, they've been added to the ArcMap table of contents. And also, if you want to be able to attach pictures to a feature class, the way you do that is go to your feature class. For example, if we were taking an inventory of damaged trees, we might want to take a picture of the actual tree to have a record of that. And you right click on the feature class and select manage and create attachments. And if you take a look at what happens when you do that, note that you got a standard table called tree damage underscore attach and then a relationship class. And this will allow you to have attachments such as pictures that are associated with the point locations. The actual pictures will get stored in this standard table and then they'll get reference to the point geometry through this relationship class. So hopefully you can appreciate creating a geo database is not very difficult and just by understanding a few basic concepts such as feature data set and feature classes you can get started with creating a lot of powerful ways to both model, store, and represent your GIS data. In this lesson, you learned about what a file geo database is and why it is important. As you saw, the file geo database is an industry standard format for storing GIS data. You also learned how to identify the standard components of a file geo database. These components included feature classes, or the primary storage unit for spatial data in the file geo database feature data sets, or a logical organization container for various feature classes, standard tables, or a collection of non-spatial data observation organized by rows and columns, relationship classes that allow one or more tables to be connected to one another using a common key, and attribute domains, which are a predetermined list of values that can be used for populating records in a feature class or standard table. As a reminder, note that 
I did not give you a thorough, exhaustive discussion of every aspect of a file geodatabase. You are encouraged to learn more about the capabilities of a file geodatabase through self-directed study using the references provided at the end of this lesson. Finally, I gave you a hands-on demonstration to help you with developing basic proficiency with creating a file geodatabase in an industry standard desktop GIS tool. In particular, I showed you how to create a basic file geodatabase for a disaster assessment scenario. Ideally, you will use this demonstration to support your own ideas and needs when using file geodatabases in your own GIS tasks. The following are references used in preparing this lesson. If you enjoyed this GIS tech video or have any comments or questions, feel free to contact me at the email address below. Thank you for watching.